dear students again we are back to an online platform in the last semester also we finished the last semester uh, through online medium because that was the time when the covid 19 virus was spreading in india and uh, then we went for a lockdown and then we were adopting the online medium for completing the semester and still we are not out of that covid 19 pandemic and we are going through difficult situation still now therefore again we are forced to sit uh, far apart you are sitting at home and i am taking the classes from the college and uh, i don't know how long we have to continue in this situation uh, you and me all of us know that it was better to sit together or stand together here and ask the things and learn together uh, and uh, go to the library take your textbooks to read it and it, that 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 flow in the campus was better but we have no situation for that we have no option for that because this deadly virus is <laughs> creating so much problem to our nation to the world um therefore we have to somehow um try to try to break the chain of this virus okay uh, we should be a part of that uh, we should be a part of breaking the chain of virus uh, so we have to wear the mask and keep the social distance as much as possible i am not wearing the mask at this moment because i am standing here in a classroom and nobody is here even um, the camera is fixed in a tripod stand and nobody is there to record it i am alone here that's why i am not wearing a mask otherwise i should also wear a mask so that is the only way that we can prevent the spreading of the virus and we have to keep the social distance as much as possible okay so once we conquer uh, or defeat this virus uh, we can come back to the normal uh situation so we can i hope we can all meet together again uh, very soon and we will come to come back to our normal type of classes i hope so anyway now we have to continue in this way and in this semester i will be handling two topics again uh, that is uh, the, the the quantum mechanics or quantum chemistry and also the spectroscopy okay in the last semester also i was handling these topics to you so in this semester we have to we have to, to, to continue with that uh, that is the remaining portions of quantum mechanics and the remaining portions of spectroscopy should be covered in this semester so here i am giving you a lecture series on the spectroscopy we will given we will begin with the nuclear magnetic resonance nuclear magnetic resonance you already have the basics of this spectroscopic technique uh, because you have already learned this in the bsc classes um, but if you think that you are uh, still lacking the basis of nmr spectroscopy i recommend you to uh, go to my lecture series on nmr spectroscopy for bsc students Now those lectures are, are uploaded in this channel itself so you can watch those videos and thereby you can get a good basis of this spectroscopic technique anyway we are going to begin our classes um, we will begin with a, 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 a discussion on the magnetism shown by the shown by the nuclei okay you already know that electrons have spin the electron spin is characterized by the spin quantum number and electron spin is half electron spin is equal to half you already know this and like that neutrons and protons also exhibit the quantum mechanical property of spin that is proton spin 
is also equal to proton spin is also equal to half and neutron spin is also equal to half. So, these are the constituent parts of the nucleus, constituent particles of the nucleus, neutrons and protons. Since the constituent particles of the nuclei also possess the property of spin and we can obviously see that the nuclei are also possessing the property of spin. So, what will be the spin or the net spin of the nucleus? If there are p number of protons and n number of neutrons in a nucleus, there will be a total of p plus n constituent particles p plus n constituent particles and this p plus n constituent particles have the individual spin of half. And what will be the sum of all these spins or what will be the net spin of the nucleus? And we should not think that all these spins will be added up and that will be the net spin of the nucleus. That is not the case because spin is a, is a vector and the net spin of the nucleus will be the vector sum of the individual spins. For example, if there are p plus n spins, then what will be the net spin of the nucleus of these p plus n spins? And that depends upon how these p plus n individual spins are arranged within the nucleus. Okay? And that depends upon the directions of the spin within the nucleus. That is how the net spin of the nucleus is being determined. For example, we will take a nucleus that is H11, that is the nucleus of H11, nucleus of hydrogen. The nucleus of hydrogen as you know has only one constituent particle in it that is a proton. So, there is only one proton and since there is equal to only one proton, uh, obviously the spin of the hydrogen nucleus will be the spin of the proton itself. Spin of the proton is half, therefore the nuclear spin of H11 will be half. This will be the nuclear spin of H11 half. But what about the H12 nucleus, H12 nucleus, okay? And in the nucleus of H12, there will be one proton, there will be one proton and one neutron. Two constituent particles are there in the nucleus. And both these constituent particles have the individual spin of half and the net spin of the nucleus depends upon how these individual spins are being arranged. And it can be arranged in two ways. B maybe both spins are in the same direction, okay, both spins are in the same direction or it will be like both spins are in the opposite direction. Okay? So, depending upon whether the spins are uh, the, in the same direction or opposite direction, it will be either added or it will be cancelled. Or if the spins are in the same direction, it will be like the adding of the spin. So, the total spin is equal to 1. If the spins are in the opposite direction, the total spin will be is equal to 0. Okay? So, there are two possibilities for the H12 nucleus. Spin can be either 1 or spin can be uh, 2, uh, spin can be 0. And we have observed that the spin of the H12 nucleus is not 0. This is not the case. And this is the case that is spin of the H12 nucleus was found to be 1. That was an experimental observation. Okay? So, it means that in the case of H12 nucleus the spins are added up and that is why we are getting the spin is equal to 1. So, how we will determine the spin of the other nuclei? And if we want to see the spin of the other nuclei we have to know how the spins are arranged. We do not know whether it will be added as in the case of the H12 nucleus. In this case, it was added, but it is not uh, sure for every nuclei that all the spins will be added. Some spins will be cancelled as well. Okay? So, the net spin depends upon these arrangements. Actually, we do not have and unfortunately, we do not have 
any sound theoretical method to predict whether how the spins are being arranged inside the nucleus so far okay so since we don't have some sound theoretical methods uh, we have to rely on some empirical uh, rules or empirical conclusions based on observations so there are some empirical conclusions based on which you can judge whether a nucleus is going to show the property of nuclear spin or not and these empirical conclusions i am going to lay down okay and let us consider some nuclei and the nuclei can have either the odd mass number or even mass number odd or even mass number so i have written here mass number mass number that is the number of protons plus neutrons together that is the mass number i am considering both cases odd mass number nuclei and even mass number nuclei and within that odd mass number nuclei again we have two categories they have the odd atomic number odd atomic number and even atomic number even atomic number so i have written here uh, atomic numbers atomic number that is the number of protons okay so again this category of uh, nuclei can also give uh, again two sub categories means odd at atomic number and even atomic number okay so we will have a total of four categories odd atomic number odd mass number even atomic number odd mass number odd atomic number even mass number even atomic number odd mass number and we can look into these type of nuclei and in this case in the first case odd atomic number and odd mass number means the number of protons is equal to odd that is why it is odd atomic number and again the number of protons plus neutron is also equal to odd that is possible only if the number of neutrons is equal to even and we can see some examples of this kind of uh, nuclei or even or even uh, zero zero is also possible okay zero so we can see some examples for example h11 h11 it has odd atomic number and odd mass number and if you are looking at the spin of this h11 it is half we already saw that the spin of h11 is equal to half um, or you can look into another example nitrogen 715 here also both atomic number and mass number are odd so nitrogen 715 is also coming under this category the spin of this nucleus is also equal to half so both of these nuclei will have half spin okay and now we can come to the next category that is even atomic number means the number of protons or charge count is equal to uh, even charge count is even or number of protons is equal to even and the atomic mass atomic mass number is odd At mass number is odd means uh, the number of neutrons should be uh, number of neutrons should be odd then only the mass number can be odd okay so when we are considering this type of uh, nuclei for example we can consider nucleus like even atomic number and uh, odd mass number uh, nitrogen uh, no, no not nitrogen oxygen 817 uh, okay o817 that has an even atomic number and uh, odd mass number and in this case the spin of this nucleus is 5 by 2 spin is equal to 5 divided by 2 okay so we have seen two categories of nuclei uh, with the odd atomic number and e odd mass number and even atomic number and odd mass number and both these type of nuclei gives half integral spins you can look at the spins of these nuclei this is s is equal to half here s is equal to 5 by 2 so you will see this type of nuclei will have half integral spins like 1 by 2 3 by 2 5 by 2 etc okay so if you are coming across certain nuclei having odd mass number this type of nuclei will give half integral spins half integral spins half integral 
integral spins okay half integral spins now we can move towards the third category that is the what atomic number and even mass number so obviously the number of protons is equal to what and the number of neutrons is equal to what will be the number of neutrons uh, it should be also what okay then only the mass number will be even what plus or is equal to even so in this type of nuclei if you are checking this type of nuclei for example boron 510 boron 510 that is what atomic number and uh, even mass number and the spin of this nucleus is equal to 3 okay and if you are looking at uh, another example that is h12 that is example that we saw already h12 odd atomic number and even mass number or you can look at uh, another example nitrogen uh, 714 nitrogen 714 this nuclei have the nuclear spin s is equal to 1 okay so if you are looking at this type of nuclei with odd atomic number and even mass number this type of nuclei will give integral spins integral spins integral integral spins here this is another category the nuclei which are giving integral spins so if the nuclei are having odd atomic number and even mass number those nuclei will give integral spins and now we can go to the third category of nuclei that is the nuclei with even atomic number and even mass number for example um he24 he24 or carbon 612 okay these are nuclei with uh, even atomic number and even mass number and obviously they have a number of protons is equal to even and the number of neutrons also is equal to even and this type of nuclei uh, they will not show any spin the spin of this type of nuclei will be is equal to zero means the nuclei are not spinning so this is how you can uh, get some idea of what type of spins the nuclei are going to give you can give, get it based on the number of neutrons and protons or based on the atomic number and uh, mass number okay now you know that the nuclei are exhibiting the property of spin if the nuclei are having the property of spin obviously what will happen if a particle is having the is exhibiting the spinning motion it will have a angular momentum so angular momentum the nucleus will have a angular momentum and the angular momentum depends upon the spin quantum number the angular momentum is represented by the letter i i is angular momentum angular momentum is equal to root of s into s plus 1 into h divided by 2 pi where s is the spin quantum number for h11 nucleus s is equal to half for h12 s is equal to 2 h uh, is, is equal to 1 and h for boron 510 it is s is equal to 3 like that of so if you know, know the spin quantum number of the nuclei then you can find out the angular momentum of this nuclei angular momentum and if you are taking h by 2 pi as a unit that is very common in spectroscopy and quantum mechanics to take h by 2 pi as a unit and then you can see that the angular uh, momentum i is equal to is equal to root of s into s plus 1 units units where 1 unit is equal to h divided by 2 pi okay and now you know that the nuclei are having the spin because of the spin it will have a, an angular momentum not only that there is an important aspect for the spin of the nuclei for that you can consider a spinning any spinning particle a charged spinning particle okay nucleus is charged it is having the positive charge 
you can consider any charge the spinning particle and let the charge be equal to q charge is equal to q and that particle has a mass of m and, and since it is a microscopic particle and it is spinning and this particle is spinning um, associated with its spin uh, it is characterized by the spin quantum number s okay so we have this type of a particle and consider that that is a point charge as well and associated with the spin of the charged particle obviously there will be a magnetic field because the spinning of the charged particle means that it is the spinning of uh, it is an electronic current right and because of this uh, there will be a magnetic field the magnetic field will have the north pole and south pole or you can say that a magnetic dipole will develop associated with a spinning particle and the strength of this dipole strength of this dipole of this point charge we are considering a point charge of q with a mass m and spin quantum number s and the strength of the magnetic dipole associated with this one or the magnetic dipole moment mu is equal to q divided by 2m into i that is the strength of the magnetic dipole or magnetic dipole moment so that is equal to q divided by 2m into i where i is equal to root of s into s plus 1 h by 2 pi root of s into s plus 1 h divided by 2 pi or we can write that is qh divided by 4 pi m root of s into s plus 1 that is the magnetic dipole moment of a point charge of point charge uh, with q as the charge and m as the mass and spin quantum number as s okay and what will be the unit of this one qh divided by 4 pi uh, m into root of s into s plus 1 we can ca calculate the unit q that is the charge therefore the unit is coulomb and h that's planck's constant the unit is kilogram meter square second raised to minus 1 that is equivalent to joule second okay and divided by uh, 4 pi m so the denominator we have kilogram and kilogram and kilogram are cancelled so what is remaining is coulomb per second meter square coulomb per second that is ampere okay so that is ampere meter square so the unit of this one is ampere meter square uh and uh, in, in in spectroscopy generally we will replace this unit again because it is more convenient for us to express the uh, unit in terms of tesla tesla that is the unit of the magnetic flux density or magnetic field strength okay so because we know that tesla uh that is equal to uh kilogram um, um second raised to minus 1 uh, per ampere second raised to minus 2 per ampere okay that is tesla so if from this one we can know that ampere is equal to kilogram second raised to minus 2 tesla raised to minus 1 okay therefore ampere meter square is equal to kilogram meter square second raised to minus 2 tesla raised to minus 1 so kilogram meter square second raised to minus 2 what is that that is joule right so we can write ampere meter square is equal to joule per tesla joules per tesla so instead of writing ampere meter square we can express it as joules per tesla so let me write it as joules per tesla mu is equal to mu is equal to qh divided by 4 pi m root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla joules per tesla okay that is the magnetic dipole moment of a point charge of q charge mass m and spin quantum number s and now we can uh, we can use this expression 
in order to find out the magnetic dipole moment uh, of a nucleus okay and be even before doing that we can do one thing we have an expression here that is qh divided by 4 pi m in this equation mu is equal to qh divided by 4 pi m into root of s into s plus 1 so i am going to take out take out this one this uh, uh, terms together qh divided by 4 pi m and i am going to determine that term for a proton okay for a proton so in the case of the proton qh divided by 4 pi m is uh, eh divided by 4 pi mp where e is equal to charge of the proton charge of the proton that is equivalent to that is equal to the charge of the electron itself even if signs are different uh, they have the same magnitude okay and eh divided by 4 pi mp and mp is the mass of the proton so instead of m i have written mp where mp is the mass of the proton so i have uh, rewritten these terms together this term this expression in the case of a proton eh divided by 4 pi mp and i am going to call this as beta n beta n and this is called a nuclear magneton nuclear magneton so nuclear magneton beta is defined as eh divided by 4 pi mp and we can calculate the value of this one this is very easy to calculate the value of this one you can just substitute the value here and that is e is the charge of the proton that is 1.6 into 10 raise to uh, minus 19 minus 19 coulomb into uh, h h is Planck's constant that is 6.626 into 10 raise to minus 34 uh, kilogram meter square second raise to minus 1 that is equal to joule second okay and uh, divided by 4 into pi that is 3.14 into mass of the proton that is 1.67 into 10 raise to minus 27 uh, kilogram okay that is a mass of the proton so we have substituted the values for and this one and you can take your calculator and find out what's the value of this one and uh, i have already done this and the value of this one is 5.05 5.05 into 10 raised to minus 27 10 raised to minus 27 what's the unit uh, kilogram and kilogram are cancelled so what is remaining is coulomb per second meter square that is ampere meter square and ampere meter square is equivalent to joules per tesla joules per tesla so beta n or nuclear magneton beta n is equal to 5.05 into 10 raise to minus 27 joules per tesla okay um, we have it in hand and now we can proceed to our old equation that is mu is equal to qh divided by 4 pi m in the root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla that is a magnetic dipole moment of a point charge q with the mass m okay and spin quantum number is s and if we are rewriting this equation in the case of a nucleus and in the case of a nucleus then we can write mu is equal to that is magnetic dipole moment of the nucleus spinning nucleus magnetic dipole moment of the spinning nucleus is equal to uh, p into e that is p into e is for q q is the charge in the case of the nucleus the charge is p into e where p is the number of protons and e is the charge of one proton therefore total charge of the nucleus is p into e so that is written instead of q multiplied by h divided by 4 pi m 4 pi into capital letter m okay i have written capital letter m, m here to show that that is the mass of the nucleus so p h divided by 4 pi m into uh, root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla that is the magnetic dipole moment of the nucleus and we got this equation just 
by substituting the parameters for nucleus in an equation which was derived for a point charge right this is an equation for the point charge we substituted the parameters of nucleus for in this equation and we then we got this uh, the new equation but we have to consider something now we cannot keep the notion that nucleus is a point charge because quantum mechanically we know that nucleus or any microscopic particle for instance like uh, electron or any subatomic particles protons neutrons etc they can't be considered as the point charge or they can be considered as something localized okay but they are delocalized so the quantum mechanical behavior is significantly different from the assumption of a point charge therefore if this equation to be valid okay if this equation to be valid we have to include some numerical factor here because this equation was uh, this equation was constructed for a point charge and we cannot consider nucleus as a point charge that's why we are going to introduce a numerical factor here therefore in the case of a nucleus mu is equal to a numerical factor g into p e h divided by 4 pi m into root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla and why we have introduced a numerical factor here this numerical factor can assume any value so that this equation will be correct okay and the value of this capital g for a nucleus this can be found out experimentally and each nuclei will have different values okay and therefore we have a new equation here like that mu is equal to g p h divided by 4 pi m into root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla and now i am going to rewrite this equation rewrite this equation i have to multiply both numerator and denominator with numerator and denominator with mp that is the mass of a proton okay then i will get a more useful equation that is mu is equal to mu is equal to g p mp eh divided by 4 pi mp into m see i multiplied the numerator and denominator with the mp so that nothing happens to the equation okay into root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla that is the magnetic dipole moment of the nucleus and here from here i am extracting certain terms eh divided by 4 pi mp eh divided by 4 pi mp you know this already eh divided by 4 pi mp that is beta n or nuclear magnetor so i am rewriting this equation as mu is equal to g p m p into beta n divided by m into root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla okay and all these terms together g p m p divided by m i am going to call these terms together as g small letter g so mu is equal to g into beta n into root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla where small letter g is equal to uh, g p m p divided by m that is small letter g and this g is called a nuclear nuclear g factor nuclear g factor okay so we have a new term small letter g and that that small letter g is called a nuclear g factor a nuclear g factor is g p m p divided by m and this nuclear g factor is a characteristic of every nucleus every nucleus will have a particular nuclear g factor and if you are considering the hydrogen nucleus that is the nucleus of h11 and the nuclear g factor for hydrogen nucleus is 
0.85 that is the nuclear g factor of hydrogen nucleus if you are looking at another nucleus that another nucleus will have another nuclear g factor okay and in most of the cases the nuclear g factor is positive and in few cases the nuclear g factor is negative as well for example if you are looking into the nuclear g factor of the silicon 29 nucleus silicon 29 silicon 29 nucleus and the nuclear g factor of the silicon 29 nucleus is negative okay so in certain rare cases the nuclear g factor can be negative also but in almost all the cases almost all common cases the nuclear g factor is positive that you have to remember and if you are looking at the fluorine 19 for example fluorine 19 then the nuclear g factor is close to the nuclear g factor of the hydrogen nucleus in this case nuclear g factor is almost like 5.2 okay that is slightly less than the nuclear g factor of the h11 nucleus and in most other cases the nuclear g factor is far less than the 5 far less than 5.585 okay so this is what you have to understand about the nuclear g factor and now we have an equation the magnetic dipole moment of a nucleus mu is equal to g beta n and root of s into s plus 1 joules per tesla and where g is equal to nuclear g factor and each nuclei will have its own nuclear g factor and beta is, is a constant that is 5.05 into 10 raised to minus 27 joules per tesla and that is called uh, uh, nuclear magneton and s is the spin quantum number and the spin quantum number of different nuclei may be different okay so if you know the nuclear g factor bar magnet and spin quantum number of the nucleus you can calculate the magnetic dipole moment of the nucleus nucleus has a magnetic dipole moment that is what we have proven now what does it mean the nucleus act like a dipole or ma magnetic dipole or a magnet with north pole and south pole so if you are looking at a, any spinning nucleus okay any spinning nucleus means any nucleus with a non zero spin and if you are looking at that nucleus that nucleus will have an angular momentum that nucleus will have a magnetic dipole moment or that nucleus will act like a tiny bar magnet very 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 small bar magnet okay so if we are placing this tiny 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 bit of nuclear magnet in an external magnet then the nuclear magnet will interact with the external magnet and this interaction is is something what we have to harvest and in order to develop the nuclear magnetic resonance so the nuclear magnetic resonance is based on this one that is the nuclei the spinning nuclei will act like a tiny bar magnet and this tiny bar magnet can interact with a, an external magnetic field and then it can also interact with a, the radiation and all these things and then we will develop a spectroscopic technique based on these things that is we, what we are we are going to learn okay so in this class you learned only a simple thing that certain nuclei will have the property of quantum mechanical spin quantum mechanical property of spin and such nuclei will show the property of magnetic uh, uh, will show the magnetic dipole moment or they will act like the magnetic dipole having north pole and south pole and this magnetic property of the nu nuclei can be harvested uh, in order to develop a spectroscopic technique called NMR spectroscopy or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy okay if you have understood this many things I am going to wind up today's class and if you have any doubt you can ask me in any medium or you can comment in the YouTube uh, video itself so that I can answer your questions and see you in the next class.